Good morning, and you join me and Mabel here at, I think it's about quarter to six, uh, the joys of puppy training. This one wanted to get up and go to the toilet earlier than usual, so that is what we did. But as promised in the last video, I was talking very much that my main focus this week is going to be around separation anxiety and crate training. And as you can see, she's just gone and got into a crate on her own, and I'm going to discuss those things now, which is a huge plus. But today is a very big day, because today I've got some errands to run. My wife's back at work, uh, family are out and stuff, so today is the day that she's going to be properly left on her own for a couple of hours for the first time. And the last week's kind of been building up to this. And as I just mentioned, separation anxiety is probably my biggest worry about Mabel here, because she is such a, just a kind sweetheart, aren't you? Yes! Which is what I was looking for and why I chose her specifically, because I wanted to be brilliant with this with my boys. But because she's such a sweetheart and wants to be with you and love on you and just be with you all the time 24 7 she's going to find it very difficult to do any training so we've got the crate here and i'm going to kind of explain what it is that i've been doing recently so we've had her for a week now and for a week since night one she's been sleeping in her own bed on the floor she has been upstairs in our room but we take everything upstairs and like i mentioned in old videos training her to go to sleep not crying at night has been going very well so from day one that's been creating this association that this space here is a very safe positive enjoyable place for her to go and sleep now a quick tip on top of that is that mabel is clearly a very denning puppy which is very good that should help with crate training but she loves to snuggle under duvets under blankets anything that she can get right underneath under the sofa under the bed that's brilliant so that's why i've added a blanket on top to make it really dark and cave like because i think that'll help her feel secure and safe and for the last week this has just been set up here in the living room where me and the boys and the wife most commonly are so she is allowed on the furniture but we tend to only allow her on the furniture in the evening once the boys have gone to bed and throughout the entire day yes that is my logo stop chewing it and throughout the entire day she stays on the floor and what we do is we just have left this door wide open i keep making noises like this just to get her used to the fact that this whole thing makes noises but the door's been open and she's been able to come and go as she pleases now in there is a really comfortable bed i don't know if you can see that one of scruff's beds that i uh all the products i'm going to be talking about are listed down in the description below so if you if i talk about anything and you want to know more information you can go down and check that down in the description box below but in there is a really comfortable bed like i say the one she's been sleeping in every night so that'll have her scent in it'll be really familiar we've got a towel in there as well that has both me and my wife scent on i've been chucking old pairs of socks or old t-shirts or whatever just so it's got my scent in and then i've got the muslin in here that I took with me when I picked her up and rubbed on all of her litter mates so that's still got the scent in there now I have got a product on the way that I've heard very good things about called a snuggle puppy I think it's called from smart pet love or something again I've got it listed down in the description box below but I've heard they're very good and I will give a full review here on the channel about those because a lot of you have been asking whether you think they're good I like the concept but I've never used one before so I'm gonna try it out on her and see if it helps but the main thing I've been doing is I've been finding, that's why she's very excited now, the treats that she loves the most. And then I've made those treats only accessible in the crate, which is this, which is what she's after right now. So whenever I give her a treat, so we've got these rawhide, they're actually like Christmas candy canes, just randomly found that she loves them. And these wee box things that I'll show you a little bit later when we do leave her. And if she wants access to those, Mabel, want it? Yes, yes, good girl, yes, straight in, good girl. She only has it in there. Now, if she brings that out and tries to chew it out of a crate, I take that off her and I put it back in the crate. So she's learning that this place here is amazing. This is where she gets all the fun. So then that's what I've been doing for the last week. So I've really been ingraining into her that this crate is a safe, fun, enjoyable experience. There's nothing worse with crate training than making it a negative experience, using it as a punishment, trapping them in there for too long. You need to kind of bed in those foundations that it's a fun environment. She's gone in there happily. She's in there on her own. I've been also been feeding her some of the meals. You've been seeing in the obedience routine, I like to work on a sit and stay with food for manners, respect training, but probably one in three, more so the last couple of days, I've been doing two of the three meals in the crate. Again, just really reinforcing in that little mind of hers that this is a fun, 
okay experience. Now, now she's in there, what I'm gonna start doing, or what I have been doing, is just been getting used to just closing this door while I'm sat here. Closing the door and then opening it. If she's a good girl, if she starts crying, then the door stays closed while I'm here until she stopped crying and then the door opens, really reinforcing that inner. So like I say, in a few hours time, I've got to pop out, I've got to go to the bank and to the shop and run some errands. So before I lock her in, the biggest thing you can do before you lock her in, not only is you laying your foundation work here, like I talk about in my perfect puppy course, again, listed below. It's all about laying down those foundations and getting things right in the first place. But now I've laid down those foundations, have made a positive association. The next most important thing I can do is exercise her. Now I'm gonna knock off a few birds with one stone with this, so I'm gonna do some exercise. I'm gonna do some dog socialization with Super Sully, my Labrador. And we're gonna do some socialization out in the world. So we're gonna to go to a local like football pitch, uh, playing big field area. Um, I'm gonna take Sully with her. We're also, that's gonna be doing some more socialization in the car, so kind of like knocking off lots of things getting that out of a system, really tiring her out from physical and mental, um, really draining that energy. Then when I bring her back in here, and then obviously I'll show you how I'm gonna leave her alone for the first time. And then I am gonna film it, hopefully, if this battery doesn't run out, um, because not only do I wanna see you guys see if it works, and if it doesn't work, I want to know. And obviously if I'm out and about, I can't see how she's handled it, how long it took her to settle down. If she settled down at all, is she gonna squeal and bark for two hours nonstop? I won't know, but if I film it, I can assess it live with you guys that I'll do at the end of this video and we'll kind of break down, okay, how did she handle it and where do we move from from here? And then that can give you guys some tips to help you with your crate training. So slight change of plans. As soon as we left the house, typical British winter, the heavens absolutely opened and it was smashing it down. So instead of picking Sully up from my parents and going straight over to that field and having a good play over on the field, we went into their house and just let them have a real good play in the living room and we did some toilet training and stuff out in the garden when it quietened down a little bit. My plan was to kind of wait out the weather and then go over to the park and do a bit of best of both, but I ended up watching the True Geordie podcast with Tyson Fury that went up last night, which I wanted to quickly mention as well. That is an absolute must watch. If you have ever suffered with mental health or you know people that do or you're just interested in boxing or just interested in listening to a good conversation in general, that podcast is absolutely incredible. One of the best things I've watched in a very long time and I highly recommend it but anyway so they had a good hour and a half real play so she's absolutely exhausted I wanted to quickly film in the car because if you remember from the last episode or a couple of episodes ago I was discussing her having a meltdown in the car but as you can hear now absolute silence so through being consistent through sticking to my plan through uh, putting the work in and creating positive associations we've already overcome the boundary of uh, struggling inside of the car during car rides and now we're moving that theory on to crate training. So like I say, she's absolutely knackered. We're gonna go home now, I'm gonna drop her off, I'm gonna talk you through how it is that I'm gonna leave her on her own for the first time, set the camera up filming her to observe her, how she reacts, and then I'm gonna go out for an hour or two, come back and then we'll, we'll recatch up then. So we could not have had a better start just as I was setting the tripod up for the camera. She's gonna got herself in the crate already, let me show you. I don't know if you can see that, it might be too dark. But she's gone and got herself in the crate already of her own accord. No guidance from me, so that's brilliant. So what I was thinking about I was going to have to do is lure her in with some treats. So you really want them to be going in of their own accord, ideally, especially that first time you leave them alone. You don't want them to get that sense of you've stuffed them in, locked the door and gone and create that negative association. Now, because she's so tired and she knows her treat's already in there, she's just taking herself in. She's lying down, chewing a toy, and eventually she'd fall asleep. Now, when she realizes I'm gonna go, that probably will stress her out, but hopefully she'll only stress out for a few minutes and then just settle back down anyway. So that's the plan. Now, if she didn't go in of her own accord, I'd have lured her in with a treat. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave her with some of her favorite treats. So she's got a raw hide in there already. I've got the good old Kong that's stuffed with fish skins from Weebox. They sent me to test some of their treats out. Um, I'm testing some, they're absolutely not sponsored or anything, but they did send to me say, see what you think. So I've got a Kong stuffed with these uh, natural fish skins. So that's gonna go in the crate as well. Then I've got, this has been her favorite treat so far. So it's a, a Weebox natural cutlet, they call them. They're like little, 
not very nice. They're like dried out burgers, I think, but she absolutely loves these. So that's gonna go in there as well. She'll be happy with that. And then last but not least, I'm gonna give her one of her candy canes. I was talking about earlier, that's what she's chewing at the minute. So I'm gonna give her the last one of those. It'll be a fresh one for her. So in there, she's got loads of different smells and tastes and stuff to occupy her. So I've chucked another one in there. So now what you want to do is you want to leave calm. Ideally, you wouldn't even want to be talking, but I'm talking to you guys. So I'm just gonna settle her down. I'm lowering my voice now. I'm trying to be a nice, calm tone of voice. And all I'm gonna do, now she's settling in, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close the door. I'm gonna get up. I'm just gonna alter the camera very slightly so we can leave it recording so you guys can see how it goes on and I can evaluate later. But obviously you guys won't be doing that. So all you're gonna do is just shut the door dead calmly. Don't make a fuss, don't make a big deal. You're just gonna leave them be and go. When you come back, you're gonna do exactly the same thing. Now, when you come back, they're definitely gonna ramp up and start crying. But when I come back, I don't know what'll happen with this camera. It might run out of battery or whatever, so I might not be able to show you. But all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come and sit back down here. And if she's crying, I'm gonna completely ignore her. No eye contact, no fuss, no talk, no nothing. And as soon as she settles down and is quiet and holds that for a few seconds, I'm gonna open the door, take her straight out to the toilet. So she learns that she gets out of the crate when she's calm and relaxed. And as time goes on, I'll extend that from a few seconds of crying to that I want her 10 seconds, 30 seconds, a minute, to the point where I come home and she just sits and waits patiently to be let out. We go out to the toilet, happy days. So that's the plan, so. Right, so I'm gonna point you down at her now. I'm gonna lock the gate and I'm just gonna dead calmly leave. So I've literally just got back. I got back and I listened at the window, complete silence. I came in nice and quietly and she was in a crate, fast asleep, amazing results. So I haven't watched the footage back yet as to whether she did any crying or how long for, but the fact that I came home and I got caught her asleep was brilliant, which meant I could let her out straight away because she was nice and calm. She's been out for a week, it's absolutely smashing it down. And this little girl, you do not like the rain, do you little one? You do not like the rain. So I've been out to the toilet, she's come back in a little bit cryy, but I've just woke her up and now she's gonna to want to be with me, but I can spend some time with her. So now she knows that I come back. If she's in a calm mood, I come back and I'm with her and now I'm gonna spend some time with her and everything's okay. So next time she goes back in there, it's okay. It's a positive experience. So I'm really excited. We're now about to go and look at the footage of, uh, let's actually, first of all, let's see how long I set a timer so that uh, I knew exactly how long I was out for. So as you can see, one minute, can you see that? It's not gonna show you, is it? It's not gonna zoom, not gonna focus, but one hour and 10 minutes I was out for, so not too long. My plan is, my plan with this video was actually expecting her to have a full on meltdown and for me to go through the process again this afternoon and hopefully show you some progress. But if it was as good as I'm hoping it was, when we look at this footage, I might not need to show it you and we might be there, but before I get carried away with myself, let's go and review the footage. Right guys, so I've brought you into my editing software because I think this is the easiest way of me showing and explaining what happened without you having to hurt your ears or listen to some craziness. So this is all, all of this stuff in blue that you can see me scanning through here. This is the video that you've just watched. You've got to this point where I've just explained here and showed you my phone that when I got home she was perfectly settled so we're going to skip to here so this right here is the point in which I left her and I left the house now if you look at this bit here you can see that these are the audio waves so where it's a flat line means it's quiet and where it spikes up it means that there's audio now I'm going to show you what that audio is in a second and that'll help make more sense but as you can see so from here so we're looking at around the 
13 minute 50 section all the way up to where are we about 18 minutes 30 so a good five minutes here of filming and she's not made a peep and she's not moved really so you can see kind of there that she's in a bed and she's chewing her treats but down here if you very closely see you can see a little marker there i think that might be my neighbor leaving the house because something settles her and then she goes into this craziness so i'll start playing it through and you can see that she really starts to ramp up and you can see that here in the audio form you can see just how loud it is compared to where it was that she was settled down now I'm not going to make you listen to all of it. Now this is obviously to be expected when a dog first gets left on its own and being able to observe it in this way to see what's really happening is a really useful tool. Now she didn't wee, she didn't poo, which suggests to me that she hasn't got too stressed. It's not a separation anxiety issue, it's just a dog being left for the first time. And the fact that I did come home to her uh, completely asleep and calm meant that at some point she did fall asleep. Now unfortunately this is a 30 minute clip here, which is the maximum my camera would record for but she had this little blip here and then she starts to settle down and move around and then she ramps back up for a while you can hear here that she's definitely crying obviously a unhappy puppy she settles down a bit here for another couple of minutes maybe a minute or so and then we go into this big block here where she's really struggling so this at this point she really wants to get out if we flip through the footage you can see that she's trying to find a way through the crate to get out but this is all part of the process she needs to realize that when the door's shut she can't get out alongside understanding that if she cries she doesn't get out now it just so happened to work out perfectly that i came home to a point where she she was very settled and calm and that would naturally have reinforced that oh cool well when i stopped crying and was calm he came home and let me out so happy days if not if that hadn't have happened then i would have had to have done what i said earlier in the video where i've had to have sit and listen to all of this and just, just pay her no attention until she calmed down to the point that i could let her out but as you can see here she really is struggling she doesn't want to settle but around here as you can see she's starting to work on her treats again she has another little blip here and then she settles down again here she's working on a treat then she has another bit of a meltdown and she's struggling she has another quiet moment here then just before the clip runs out at 30 minutes you'll notice that she just about stops if we zoom in on it you can see on the audio form here that she does stop and then obviously the camera shuts out at 30 minutes so at some point between 30 minutes and an hour and 15 she finally stopped settled down and went to sleep which is at what point i came home so um what i'm going to do is i'm going to try and find a camera that can film for longer than 30 minutes maybe one of my old gopros or something which will then allow us to really study exactly at what point she settled down and if i keep recording it hopefully what we're going to see is that time from maybe if it was around 30 minutes come down and down and down and that's the plan so there we go reviewing that footage was actually very interesting so not quite as amazing as i had originally hoped on the fact that coming home when she was asleep i was kind of in my head because i listened to her at the window when we first left and in that point at the start of the clip where you saw for a good five minutes she was quiet i stayed for a minute or two didn't hear anything of what awesome then when i got home and she was still settled i thought oh my god as if she's gone straight through without crying clearly from being able to film it that wasn't the case so there's definitely work to do and we're going to monitor it just from looking at that video editing it i already know this is going to be a long video so i'm not going to show you me doing this again this afternoon but i am going to carry on in future videos updating you on how it's going but this is kind of the process now following that same procedure keeping reinforcing that it's a positive place keeping feeding her in there keeping a high value rewards in there keeping the door open when the family's around so she can come in and go and then very calmly leaving her in there and what my plan is to leave her twice a day every day for around an hour to two hours until she really settles down and then at that point i'll start gradually increasing the time that she's left alone in the crate for so lots of work sometimes it can take a couple of days sometimes it can take weeks and with some dogs it can take months especially if you're not doing the right thing so but because you guys are coming along for the journey and you're starting like me following a plan setting your foundations right doing things right from day one i promise you you'll get through it that crying is hard and it's difficult to listen to but do not give in to it stay strong don't punish them don't get frustrated stay calm be a calm consistent leader and you will have a perfect canine companion it's just difficult in this stage 
page but it is worth it in the end so hope you enjoyed the video if you did click like make sure you go down in the description box and check out all the links to all the products i talked about follow us on instagram subscribe if you're new here all that jazz i'll see you on the next episode of will and mabel